Excel for business architecture analysis. What we are looking at here is a pivot table summarizing all source and target objects in the full model we just looked at. The sums are the numbers of relationships between objects. There is a total of 137 relationships based on our case study. This may seem like a lot, but you will see how we narrow this down to gain insights. To the right is a pane called Queries and Connections. This spreadsheet is connected to the exported CSV files from our Archie model. I'll show you how this works in our Follow the Mouse session. You get this workbook with the course so you can see how it was all constructed. As we said at the outset, I'll show you some tricks we use here with Power Query. Just to drive the point home here, what we are doing is what $250,000 tools can do, but we're doing it with the free and readily available tools for practitioners. Also notice that there are a few added rows, application components, node, resource, and system software. This highlights we are not only using the BizBock meta model, but we're also extending the model with Archimate objects to bring business and IT into alignment. This, in my opinion, is a key value proposition for practitioners. Now let's do our follow the mouse session and I'll show you how it works. Excel for business architecture analysis, follow the mouse session. This session is all about the good old cross mapping. In business architecture speak, this is a matrix of things what you're seeing on screen now. We build up an X axis, which is horizontal, and we, a Y axis of objects that are the meta model and the things that are instantiated under the meta model, which are the objects that we're creating. So where you see a relationship between the two, where there is a relationship between the two objects, you'll see a sum, you'll see a number. So we are taking two lists of things and relating them together a list of source objects and target objects. Given we have a meta model to follow, we are in an effect grouping our model so we can query it more effectively. I really like using these two tools together in this way. With the visual modeling in Archie, you are efficiently getting in tune with your stakeholders in meetings, even being able to query the model on the spot. Then using Excel, you get into analysis mode and you analyze your architecture. But how did we get all this into Excel? Well, here was where we put together a few tricks that I'll show you in Power Query. And that table is taking data from this table. And how do we make this table? This is where it's going to get a little bit more interesting. So just imagine we've done an export of CSV files out of our Archie file, which I have. So we built a model already and I've downloaded some CSV files. Now I showed you the procedure before in Archie, how to get Excel, how to get CSV files out. You do export to CSV. It'll make three files, relations, properties, and elements. So what you want to do is you want to put those in a location and then you've got to go and get them somehow. You've got to get the data. So enter Excel Power Query data from file csv file and you have to do that twice you have to do that for the elements and you have to do that for the relations and when you do it it'll ask you i can't do it right now because i just want to take you through this demo quickly but it'll ask you do you want to connect to the files or do you want to import the files or do you want to stick them in a data model import the files sticks them in a worksheet importing with the data model sticks them into RAM. What you want to do is you want to just make a connection to these files. The beauty of doing that is if you make edits to those files, you can go and make edits on the fly and then they'll reflect straight into your pivot tables if you want to do it that way. That is a, a nice way to have a, a mini ETL. So you extract, da extract data, you transform it on the fly and then you load it into some sort of output. That is a, uh, the value of doing it this way. So I'm going to show you that. First, once you've got those two things in, you basically need to, what you'll be presented with, and it's taking a second, okay. You'll be presented with 
these two queries. Basically, we've, we've imported these. And what happens is an, a set of applied steps gets added. Excel will pick up this as a source. Going awfully so. There's the file. There's the, there's the file. It remembers the way the file is. That's the source. Hit OK. And what we want to do, because as it, as it does an import, it doesn't, let, doesn't take the top row. It renames the top row. So you actually have to click on this, use first row as headers. And that's what that does. So that's this next step, promote headers. Now you do this on both files. So all of a sudden now you've got ID type name and documentation. So you've, there's all your elements with all of your IDs and all of your names and all of your types. And the types are basically the meta model and the documentation. And this step gets added by itself. Now you do that twice. You do import once. We'll get data for once from for the elements and one for relations. Now, relations adds two more source and target with IDs. Now, in effect, if you did a self join where you picked this as the source relating to that on the join, you could get all of the pull back all of the names that sit in there which makes sense to us that we can read and that's what's going to go into your pivot table we're going to do the same thing twice so we do an append which is basically stacking two files on top of each other so that you get id type name documentation and remember we had that in the previous elements table that we also get that we also get two more fields or two more columns source and target Okay, and so those will be an appended on top of each other. So you'll get one table that has one, two, three, four, five, six columns. So how do we do that? Well, as soon as you have those two imported, right, you close down your query. You go, don't think it likes being on such a big screen. Combine append. And what that'll do is it'll ask you for two tables. So you, we now have our two queries. We still have our two tables. We stick the first table in, which is elements, the second one, which is relations, and you'll stack them on top of each other. And it'll do it for you. And it'll create a new query called append, append one, which is what this is. So if I go back to get data and I'll go back into launch my Power Query editor, hit append. And you've seen, now you see back through our applied steps. Where was the source? Right, here are our little, is our little gear icon. We can see where the source is. See, those two two tables and now what we do is we go into queries merge queries so because we've imported them or we've connected to those csv files they come up as two queries okay then you have merge queries you click merge queries and then you then when you do the merge queries you have to pick with this All right so your append is your source table is your start of the join Right, so you want to pick source and then you want to go back to the current stable, which is which is basically a self-join. So it says current. And then you relate that field source to that field ID and it's always a left outer. Right, you hit OK. I won't hit OK because I've done it already. And then what you get is this table here. You see that? 
you get this little button here. That allows you to go and pull back any matching um, fields. So that would mean you'd get the source, right? And you'd get the source name, and then you'd also get source documentation, which then I've done. So you've hit the expand, and you'll see source name and source documentation. And as we go down the query, and hey presto, there they are. Okay, so you go through that another time because you want to now do the target, which is the other side of the relationship. And then you want to expand that and do the same thing. And then what I did was I removed some of the columns. Don't worry, you get this file. You'll see how this is done. But you have a rudimentary way to do that. Now, in the end, once you've done the get data, then you've done the append. You stacked them on top of each other. Then you've done a merge. You'd go and you hit close and load. Okay, so what that'll do is it'll automatically pull up a spreadsheet, which was the name of the query that you, you had. It'll pull up a sheet, which is taking a second. And here is your, see that? See that? Type name documentation, source type, source name documentation, target name, target type, target name, target documentation. And now I have a whole database, basically inside Excel, that we then can create a pivot table with. So now we go and hit insert pivot table. Make sure that you've highlighted a field inside or a cell inside that table and you hit insert pivot table from table or range. And that'll say, put it in a new, a new tab, in a new spreadsheet, and then hey presto, away you go. Now the reason I'm laboring and I'm spending a little bit of time on this is to ensure that you have both of those dashboards up side by side. So you, you understand all the tricks. Okay, so there's a little bit of fiddling, and I've already done it for you, and you already get the download, so you don't really have to do it. But if you want to learn how to do it, they're here. The juice is the relationship. The object and the two lists related to each other, as you start to do the visuals and the models, that is where you become the answer shop because you've got to go through that journey. I don't know if I've told you the story about the journey before, but you go from data, information, knowledge, and then you make wise decisions out to wisdom. Knowledge, you can only call yourself knowledgeable when you've connected the dots. So when you know how things are hanging together and you can make a course of action. So that's basically what we're trying to do here. Now, the beauty of this is, to create the pivot table, you take the type, okay? So we, we have our meta model, all right? And the meta model has all the relations in it, has all the objects in it. And that's basically a type. So you put that in the filter of the pivot table. So now I can filter on anything. So I can filter on, if I hit that button, away I go. I can filter on aggregation, assignment, I'm filtering on the relationships now. Okay. And then in your columns, right, your target, which is your which is your X, and your source, which is your Y, you do the type and the name. So you can then see that on the source, the type is business object. And then I can see, okay, well, these are the names of the business objects. Uh, and is business object related to business object? Yes, it is. There must be a relationship. Now, this is this is where we start to get into every one of our five valuable viewpoints. We will start to go into the, the model, the Archie model. I'll show you the artifact. We'll do a little bit of a, a show and tell in the slides. They're very easy to follow. And then we'll do a uh, Excel spreadsheets. You'll follow the model and then we'll go through a key point and you'll see how, the, how it all relates together. But these dashboards will help you understand important cross mapping. Don't forget, we're relating BizBock to Archimate. Same name, same concepts, better relationships, 
and then you can expand out into your uh, operational components. So things like application components, technology components, system software, nodes, devices, all of those componentry will then be reflected with your business architecture and your business strategy. So we're just doing a current state right now. So I'll leave you there with this. So we've gone through all of the append, we've gone through two merges, we've got our queries and connections, and we've got our pivot table ready to go for our five valuable viewpoints in section four.